Uh, welcome to my C++ on C 2023 lightning talk entitled C++ versus Haskell versus BQN. My name is Connor Hookstra. I go by code underscore report online, Twitter, YouTube, etc. This is my about me slide. I don't have time for it. This is the three podcasts I have. I don't have time for it. If you're interested, go check this GitHub repo. That's where you can find all the stuff about me. Today we are going to be solving a very simple problem in three different languages, and that is filtering in odds. So here we have an example list, one, two, three, four, five. If you filter out the evens in the odds, you end up with one, three, five. So first, let's take a look at our first C++ solution, and we are going to use a for loop boo. We don't like for loops, but that's where we're going to start. We're making use of a vector, pushing back, and pretty straightforward C++14 function to deduce return type, C++11 auto, C++ range based for loop. But you should all be thinking, what algorithm should we be using? Nope. All right. Nope. All right, copy if. Do your homework, folks. Um, copy if here, we're basically just making use of a lambda that checks if it's odd, so this is C++11 lambda, except it's actually not, it's a C++14 generic lambda. And uh, we can do a little bit better here, because in C++20 we got the uh, range overload, so we no longer need to specify the iterators, this is fantastic, so C++20 range overload, but we can do even better now in C++20 because we got uh, ranges. So now we have access to a filter function, this is fantastic, fantastic C++20 ranges, and now we're going to take a look at the equivalent in Haskell, which is going to make you quite sad. We all love Haskell, and uh, this is the equivalent Haskell code, a lot nicer, but guess what, you actually don't need a lambda, they've got a function called odd, guess what, it can also be point free, you don't need the x's, guess what, at this point, you don't need the function, you can just use filter or odd. All right, folks, moving on to BQN. This is where we got three minutes left. We're doing great. We are going to do an, can you take the mic now? Yeah. Alt tab. We're going to live code, folks. So BQN, it's the newest APL. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great language. So the uh, brace x brace is a function, the identity function here, and we've got range five, which just gives us one to four. So we're going to do a, a one plus to get that one to five. So now we've got our input sequence. How are we going to filter this? First thing we need to do is build up a Boolean mask. If Tristan's in the crowd, uh, this is the uh, function we were talking last night. It's called compress or replicate in BQN. This gives us a Boolean mask by doing two modulus. Now we just need to parenthesize this and pass it the original sequence, which is going to filter out anything that corresponded to a zero. We're done. Fantastic, folks. Moving back to our slide deck, we're going to take a look at a few other solutions. So that solution we just looked at uh, can be made uh, point free by doing the following. So we've got the I combinator on the right and the phi combinator. Fantastic, folks, but we can do even more. So taking a look at another explicit solution, we're making use of the W combinator here, but we can make that point free as well by doing the following. So now we've got the phi combinator, another phi combinator, the W combinator, the I combinator, the I combinator. Am I going to explain it? Absolutely not, folks. <laughs> and we've got... We've, we've gone back to our previous solution, and these solutions aren't even the optimal solution because we can make use of, folks, the sigma combinator. Fantastic. Can I explain this? Absolutely not. If you're interested, check out combinatorylogic.com, BQM pad to try out BQN or APL at tryPL.org. Thanks for listening.